Hi, I'm Daryl Howard. I'd like to welcome you to something extremely special today. Uh, you are going to actually get to experience a private exhibit at my studio ranch. Uh, in this particular exhibit, it's going to be a technical show, and I'm thrilled about that. And I'm also fortunate enough to have um, a technical aspect on this program that's going to show you exactly how I do a Japanese woodblock print. Uh, it's very unusual for my clients to get to come and stand in the art studio with me and actually watch me pull a print and go through the creative process of how these are made. And I'm thrilled that you're getting to share this with me. Japanese woodblock printmaking is a relief form of printmaking and that means that first you have to do a color sketch and you break the design into multiple shape forms. Every color is a different wood carving in other words based on how many colors you have that's how many blocks you're going to have to carve. So I do a color design, my images are abstract because I'm dealing with shapes instead of lines. And I have to, in the beginning, I transferred all of my images from a hand-drawn sketch to a block of wood, and I hand-carved the wood with Japanese carving tools. Uh, around 1982, it was brought to my attention that I could not make a living doing one woodblock print a year, so a friend said, you ought to try sandblasting. So I still have to do a color sketch on uh, tracing paper, basically, and I put carbon paper down, believe it or not, I could still find it, and traced one color at a time from my sketch to a sandblast stencil that had been applied to a clear heart redwood. I would carve the stencil away. The redwood, I had to go to a special studio, the redwood would be sandblasted, but only the soft pulp of the wood would be blasted away. So I still had carving, but it increased my production up to five to seven woodblock prints different images in one year. So that was wonderful. Three years ago, I had hand surgery and my hand surgeon said, you can't do that anymore. So I got on the computer, I found a Japanese woodblock printmaker who was drawing his design in Photoshop on computer, sending one color at a time, drawn the same way I've been drawing, except with a stylus and a Wicom tablet sending one color at a time to another computer and the man who owned that computer has a CNC router. His computer first virtually routed my one color and then it was put onto the routing machine and today a computer is routing my blocks. I was concerned about that as far as the integrity of what that means as, a, as an original graphic artist and I actually took a museum curator to lunch sat her down and said, is this going to in any way affect the integrity of my work as a woodblock printmaker? And she said, I think it's amazing. I, as a matter of fact, I would like to use those computer blocks in a museum show. How modern technology has affected an ancient art form. So that's the beginning, sketching and carving and bringing you up to date with the computer. The carving tools that I used to use are extremely special. I still use them in cleaning up the computer blocks, but I also use a Dremel tool. The carving tools are made by Samurai Sword Makers. Uh, they are an amazing tool. There's very few of these left in Japan. That would be the Sword Makers. And so the tools are very special. Supposedly, they last three artists' lifetimes. So I will be willing my tools to someone else. The paper that I use is also very special to actually complete the print on. The paper is made in a village called Fukui on the Sea of Japan, and the Living National Pre uh, Treasure Japanese paper maker lives there. Mulberry trees grow on the mountainside. They cut the mulberry trees. The fiber is stripped from these trees. It's boiled for three days. There's a glutinous root that also grows in the mountain that is dug. It's cooked with this glutinous root for three days. That is why I can print with watercolor on damp paper and the color doesn't bleed. It is specifically made for this process. It is the paper variety that I use is called Kizuki and it is made from the mulberry tree fiber. I still get it from Japan. Um, 
and it comes to my mailbox. In 10 days, I get it delivered. So there's still paper makers there producing it. The ink that I use is Winsor Newton watercolor. I mix it with traditional Japanese rice paste, which adds transparency. I add glycerin. Glycerin keeps watercolor wet longer. Believe it or not, this is what my teacher in Japan, Hodaka Yoshida, used was Winsor Newton watercolor, Japanese rice paste, and glycerin. So it is the very basic way to make your own inks. Today I have over 200 colors that I've hand built myself. The other tool to get the ink on the block, you have to have special brushes. The, spread, the brushes are also made in Japan. They're craftsmen for every part of this process. The carving tools, the paper, the brushes. The brushes are a boar bristle. They're bound with a uh, birch and then bound again with a copper wire. Uh, I have to soak the brushes for uh, at least an hour prior to printing. Soaking wood swells the wood. It prevents the bristles from falling out. Very small matter, but it's huge because the brushes are extremely expensive. Again, there's, you can only get these brushes in Japan. And the brushes uh, are rounded, and each bristle comes to a very fine point. The brushes have to be hand sharpened. I had to sharpen a brush. Thank heavens I only had to do it one time. I was given a piece of shark skin, which is a natural sandpaper, and I literally took the brush for two hours back and forth and back and forth to get each bristle to come to a point. A brush sharpened in this fashion will prevent lines when you paint the watercolor onto the wood carving. Obviously the next step is I take these brushes and if I have an area that goes from light to dark, I'll put pure Japanese rice paste down, then I'll put the Winsor Newton watercolor, that's two brushes, and I'll have a third brush that I'll actually gradate the color together. The beauty of this printing process is, if you look at print number one next to print number two, they're subtly different. It is hand inked, hand pulled. They're close, but they're not perfect. And I've been doing this for 40 years, and I can still show you subtle differences between each print, which is really cool. One of the things that makes my woodblock prints unique is that um, in the early 80s, I started using gold, silver, and copper leaf. And you might ask yourself, why on earth do you want to use leafing on a woodblock print that's done with watercolor and print paper? Um, in 81, I quit my teaching job and moved to the Hopi Indian Reservation. And I was with a, a, a Hopi Indian named Charles Lolama. And one day at tea, he said, when are you going to start using gold, silver, and copper in your work? And I said, I'm not a jeweler. And he looked at me in the eye and he said, figure it out. You don't ever tell me that. <laughs> so I proceeded, oh, 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 and then, oh yeah, by the way, he said, when you do use gold, silver, and copper, use the very best gold and the very best silver and the very best copper that you can possibly get because it may be on the very best piece of art you ever make in your life and you want the best materials. So what I'm gonna show you is the actual copper leaf the copper leaf, you can see, is a very strong material. Uh, I apply a ground to the paper after the color is applied. Then I, with my breath, drop the leafing on and then burnish it with my finger. And I'm just going to drop this so you can see what it does. Uh, the next leaf I want to show you is sterling silver leaf. And the silver is finer. You can see that it's thinner. Uh, the copper, silver, and gold, after I've applied it, I do coat it so that it's not going to tarnish, just for everybody's heads up, because I've got some Japanese woodblock prints that had silver that are now black. The Japanese did not coat their silver, which is interesting. So the silver's a little more difficult to the copper, and I'll just let it go. And the next is the 22 karat gold leaf, and this is seriously like working with a cloud. This is the 22 karat gold leaf. This is the most difficult to work with. Uh, this leaf is Italian. I get it out of New York. Um, and it's very, very fine. It is the most difficult thing to work with. It is like working with a cloud. So when, if I can get it off of my hand, I'll let you see it fall. And it's very different than the copper. And 
the silver. Now I have a little bit left on me and some people go, well, how do I know that's really 22 karat gold? If you literally take your fingers and rub the gold that you can still see, it's gone. You can tell it's 22 karat because now it's just been absorbed into my body. And that is really cool because it's also, uh, there's also therapists that use this as therapy. There's people that eat 22 karat gold. So I've just had a therapy treatment in front of you. <laughs>